And I saw the difference in a week. I said it all the time, and I started doing her mirror work. I would go to the mirror, and though I didn't feel it, and the word stuck in my throat, I would look in the mirror and I would say, I love you very much, Jackie. You're perfect exactly the way you are. All right. This is going well. I have all the power. And nothing can stop me. I feel healthy and, and breathing, and air feels really good, and... I'm accepting that I'm a part of the universe and gives me exactly what I ask for. Okay, so I totally tripped. It's all right. It was a positive trip. In the moments of deepest despair, there's actually humor always. Humor lifts us up to God. It lightens up every situation. But you just before you get there, there's usually this time of pain-filled joy or joy-filled pain where you might have to break down with some deep sobs. When someone's in trouble, I think of them just like someone who's come out of a movie, a scary movie, and they're crying. Their tears are real, their fear is real, but what they saw that caused the fear is not real, it's a movie. So what I'll do is I offer some suggestions about ways to reframe their situation or find a blessing in a seeming problem. And yes, there are challenges in life that we all go through, and there's no shame with that, but it's what you do with the challenges that counts. Now that I know when so-called negative things happen, that they're really positive things, and that what I need to do is focus on a positive outcome, and then stay course, and then so shall I have that experience. The way that you retrain yourself is to shift from uh, having a fear to uh, having a curiosity. You know, substitute the word curiosity for the word fear. Because a lot of us, when we start doing those things to honor our soul or to express our creativity, those are really vulnerable acts. You know, the things that we intend or that we affirm for our lives are those things that are deeply important to our soul. And so they're vulnerable. And too often we turn to people who just squash them, you know, or who tell you why it isn't going to work or why that's a crazy affirmation or that's a crazy intention. That's called going to the hardware store for milk. You want to go to the people who are really going to hold your hand on the journey and say, hey, I'm there, right there with you. Awareness is the first step in healing or changing. When you're facing challenges on the journey, it's tempting to turn back or to blame somebody for the situation. The healing attitude, though, is to think of any external challenge as simply a reflection of your own internal resistance to change. I'm sure everyone I know thinks I'm totally nuts. Am I right? I'll never make it through this. I'll probably flake out like I always do. Besides, this isn't even doing any good anyway. Before the 15th and 16th centuries, um, all of the ships were made out of wood. Not because iron wasn't available and steel wasn't available, but because there was a belief that wood floated. So therefore, you had to make ships out of things that floated. And then someone came along and said that it has absolutely nothing to do with what things are made out of. It has to do with the amount of water that is being dispersed. That's, that's what determines whether something will float or not. And I think about that all the time because it's, it's in the contemplation of what you desire that you create what it is that you want to have for yourself. The law of flotation was not discovered by the contemplation of the sinking of things. I mean, come on. I'm not one of these self-help people. I don't believe in crystals and white light and the divine feminine and angels and source energy. I mean, what is that? Let's be real. It's all just wishful thinking. We tend to live our lives based on what we believe about ourselves, our world, our capabilities, and our limits. Where do those beliefs come from? More often than not, they come from what other people have told us. History, science, religion, culture, family. What if they're wrong? I'm all these people telling me what to do, and I can please. If it weren't for my mom, I'd at least have a chance. I mean, come on, where was Louise Hay when I was growing up? I had no one to show me the way to be. And my dad is no Wayne Dyer, I can tell you that much. Anything you complain about repetitively is something that you have an unconscious intention to produce. 
And now, I'm just too old to change my life. That's it. Too old, lazy, short wasted. I should have tried to be positive years ago. I think it really starts with realizing that you don't love yourself, that most people don't. Most people feel they're not good enough, that they haven't done it right, they won't do it right, they'll never be enough, and they're definitely not lovable. And when we come from that space, it's very hard to create things for ourselves that are really good. Things weren't so bad before. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I'm fine the way I am. Everything was fine the way it was. And now I'm here and just stayed the same. Everything's messed up and confused. Well, at least I know what to expect here. It may not be the best, but at least I know how to handle this. And what's in the future might be worse. So I better not try and go out there and change things. What if I fail? What if I don't succeed? I should just go back. I don't have time for this. I mean, I have so much to do. I'll, just, I'll come back later. I'll do it later. I a job. I have all these important things. And I gotta go. I just, I have to go. A lot of times, we're missing information about what the next step might be in terms of the action equation of affirmations plus actions equals miracles, right? A lot of times we're missing information about what to do, how to take action, but we call it something else, like, I must be afraid, that, that's why I'm stuck. What if I lose my friends and family doing this stuff? People are going to think I'm crazy. People are going to find out that I'm involved in some weird psychological thing and they're all going to laugh at just when I go home. It's not right. It doesn't feel right. Where am I? We have been conditioned to feel the feelings of the things that we don't want in life and that we're afraid of. We wake up in the morning and we see the six o'clock news and then we go through our day saying, oh, I hope I'm not going to see that today or I hope it's not around the corner. Where do we learn to feel the things that we don't want rather than things that we choose to have? If you can just remember that any time something feels uncomfortable, just stop where you are and acknowledge that it's just a matter of reaching for better feeling thoughts. Reaching for a feeling of relief works the resistance out of everything. A client of mine in a neighboring state called me up and he was really, really depressed and, and suicidal. I asked him if during the course of the day he had seen anything that he could do that would be a positive contribution to somebody. And he thought about it for a long time. And he said, well, there's an elderly lady that lives in the apartment below me. When I came home today, I saw that the area in front of her apartment was dirty and needed sweeping. I said, okay, don't even ring her doorbell or anything like that. Just take your broom down there. I'll stay on the phone right now. Go down with your broom and clean that area. I'll wait. And um, so he was gone for you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Finally, he came back, and it was like a different person. You know, he had made this thing happen. You know, he had gotten out of himself enough to make a contribution, and that started this flow of positive energy. You know, he was, he was completely different when uh, I heard his voice come back on the line. And so, you know, that kind of thing lets me know that it's possible to, um, to live your life that way, that it's possible to live your life kind of on the contribution side and let it be okay to receive back also. What's wrong with me? What am I not doing right? I'm doing the inner work. Where's the reward?